Hello guys, welcome to Tech Vitals. Today we are going to learn how to automatically mount the Linux partitions. In the last video, we learned about how to format the Linux partitions with the file system and then mount the partition by defining the mount point and using the mount command. But we didn't save our mounted partitions. So in this video, we are going to learn how to automatically mount our Linux partitions and save them permanently. So to do that, we are going to modify the fs-tab file. Let's see what that file looks like. So let's go to our root directory. And from here, let's go inside hc directory. And inside this hc directory, we have fs-tab file. And we can use the vi command to go inside our fs-tab file. So let's press enter. Okay, so these three are the Linux partitions that have been mounted by our system. The first one and the last one where you can see slash dev slash mapper. These two are the logical volumes. The logical volume is also a very important topic in the Linux partitions which we are going to learn in the next video. So for now let's focus on this second partition. Now in this fs tab file to mount the Linux partition we have to define six columns. So this is the first column, this is the second column, this is the third column, fourth column, fifth and sixth column. So let's understand what these columns are for. So the first column it indicates our Linux partition. So this is actually our SDA partition which is the partition that was created automatically when we installed our operating system in our virtual box. And this UUID means universal unique identifier and this long number is the UUID of our SDA Linux partition. Then this second column defines the mount point of this partition. So in our previous video, we learned about how to create the mount points. So this slash boot is the mount point for this SDA1 Linux partition. Then the third column is for the file system. So our SDA1 partition has the ext4 file system. We can also have XFS or swap or some other file systems as well. Then this fourth column is for the options. Now when it comes to mount the Linux partitions, we can have lots of options. I will explain about some of the important options in a minute. So we'll get back to options. And this fifth column is for the dump. Dump is related to keep the backup of the file system. So this is used by the dump utility to decide when to make a backup. So in this column, we can either have the value of 0 or the value of 1. If we put 0 in this dump column, then that means this partition will not be included in the dump operation or dump will ignore this file system when making a backup. Or if we put 1 in this column, then this file system or this partition will be included in the dump operation. Then finally, our sixth column indicates the pass column. It is related to file system check or the shortcut for that is FSCK, that is file system check. And this column determines in which order the file systems should be checked. So in this column, there are three possible values or three possible entries. They are 0, 1 and 2. 0 means it will never perform the file system check on this partition. 1 means this partition will be on high priority for the file system check over other partition. And 2 means this partition will be on the low priority. So if you don't want to see if the file system has any errors, then you can just put 0 in this column. If you want high priority for your partition, 
for the file system check then you can put one and for the low priority about file system check you can provide two on this column okay so now let's get back to our options column so we have lots of options available but the most used or the most important ones are auto or no auto exec or no exec user or no user ro or rw sync or async suid or no suid and defaults as we have in here okay so let's talk about auto or non-auto the auto option specifies that the partition should be automatically mounted on boot time and no auto specifies that the partition should be explicitly mounted so when we execute the mount command all partition that has the value or that has the option of auto will get mounted automatically while for the no auto partitions we have to mount them explicitly now let's talk about exec or no exec exec specifies that the files residing in that partition will be able to execute and no exec simply refers that the files in that partition will not be able to execute for the better security now let's move on to user or no user the user option specifies that any users will be able to mount the partitions and no user specifies that only root user will be able to mount any partitions then we have ro or rw ro means that the file system should be mounted as read only option and rw means that the file system will be mounted as readable and writable so rw enables read write option to our partition next we have sync or async this specifies how the input and output to the file system should be done so sync means it should be done synchronously that is when you copy a file to the floppy the changes are physically written to the floppy at the same time you issue the copy command and for async the changes will be written only at the time of unmounting the floppy then we have suid or no suid suid allows the operation of suid and sgid bits that means it will allow the users on a computer system to execute binary executables and no suid simply blocks the operation of suid and sgid bits that means the user will not be allowed to execute the binary executables and finally we have defaults option this defaults option is the collection or the combination of multiple options so defaults is the combination of rw suid dev exec auto no user and async this dev option is the new one for us dev simply means to be able to interpret the special devices on the file system and as the name suggests defaults is the default option that we use to mount the linux partition okay so now let's try to mount the linux partitions that we created so let's first exit from this fs tab file okay so in the second video of this linux partition series we created the mbr partition using the fdisk command so let's take a look at that partition the partition was slash dev slash sdb okay so here we have four partitions for the first partition sdb1 uh, we don't have to do anything because it's a swap partition and we have already did the swap on in the previous video so we need to mount these two partitions which are the logical partitions sdb5 and sdb6 so let's try to mount this sdb5 
5 partition. Now before going to that fstab file, let's check the UUID or the universal unique identifier of this sdb5 partition. To check the UUID of our partitions, we use the command blkid and we have to use the sudo command and press the enter. Now as you can see for the slash dev slash sdb5 here is our uuid so we can simply copy this uuid now let's go to our fstab file okay now let's go to insert mode now under this sda1 partition let's type uuid equals and then paste the uuid and if you remember in the last video we had created a directory named mbr inside the mnt directory which is inside the root directory so that we can use it as a mount point for our mbr partition so we are going to use the same directory as a mount point so that is inside root directory and inside mnt directory and the directory name is mbr okay so now let's give the file system so i'm gonna give ext4 for this partition now for the options you can choose any options based on your preference but for now i'm just gonna go with defaults now the fifth column is for the dump so if you want to keep a backup of this partition, then you can give 1 or else 0. So let's give 1. And the last column is for the pass or for the file system check. And uh, I don't really want this partition for the file system check. So I'm just going to give 0. Okay. So let's save this file. Okay. And also make sure to use the sudo command while executing the vifs tab because if you use the vifs tab without using the sudo command then it will not let you to write inside that fs tab file so if you are not logged in as the root user then you have to use sudo command okay so let's also repeat the same process for our gpt partition so let's clear the screen first in the third video in this Linux partition series, we created a GPT partition using the gdisk command. So if we check gdisk and the device or the partition was sdc. So here we have three partitions. The first one is Linux swap partition and the other two are the default Linux partition. So let's mount this sdc partition. So uh, first we need to know the UUID of this partition. So let's use the command blkid and let's find the sdc2. So here we have sdc2 and let's copy this UUID. And now let's again go to our fstab file. So make sure to use sudo command and then fstab. Okay, so let's go to insert mode and under this sdb5 partition let's create the mount settings for our sdc2 partition so uuid equals the uuid of sdc2 and in the previous video we created a gpt directory inside mnt directory to use as a mount point for the gpt partition so we are going to give that uh, mount point here and for this partition let's use xfs file system we can just give defaults as the options and for the dump let's give zero and uh, let's give two here so that we can check for any error in this file system and actually let's also uh, give two for this 
MBR partition as well because before mounting our Linux partitions uh, it is a good idea to make sure that there is no error in our file system so since we have given two in this both of our new partitions it will check for any errors in these two uh, new partitions before mounting and saving it permanently so let's save it now if we reboot our machine then the mount for those two partitions will be saved but before rebooting the machine let's check for any kind of error in our file system so let's type sudo mount hyphen a okay so it looks like we don't have any error if we type mount then at the bottom uh, we can see this slash tape slash stb5 and slash tape slash sdc2 are in the list of mounted partition and now the only thing left is to reboot our machine so let's reboot our machine systemctl reboot hyphen i so our machine is rebooting let's reconnect to our machine okay so now if we check mount and then search for SD you can see our SDC2 which is the GPT partition and SDB5 which is the MBR partition have been mounted and the mount point of this GPT partition is slash MNT slash GPT and the mount point for this STB5 partition is slash MNT slash MBR and we can also see the file system type and all the options we had given using our FS tab file. So by this time we have learned how to create the MBR partition using FDisk, how to create GPT partition using FDisk how to activate swap partition and how to automatically mount our Linux partitions using the FS tab. In the next video, we are going to discuss about the logical volumes, which is extremely important and helpful in the Linux. When we run out of space in our physical volume, then we can add additional drive and make it a logical drive. The logical volumes are functionally equivalent to partitions on a physical disk but with much more flexibility and logical volumes are the primary component that users and applications will interact with. So we will learn about logical volumes in detail in our next video. Till then, keep learning. Goodbye.